Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you the awesome Radicode 102. I bought this on Amazon for about 300 bucks. This is the newest of two models of the Radicode series, the other being the 101. The Radicode 102 has a more sensitive scintillation crystal inside, which allows it to read at a higher count than the 101. Now for comparison, I've bought out my cheap generic Geiger counter here I bought from Amazon a few years back. And compared to the Radicode, it does not give precise counts and it can just only detect the radiation. The Radicode is also built much more sound compared to the Geiger counter, probably because it's over triple the price. Let's talk about why the Radicode is so much smaller than the regular old Geiger counter. Regular Geiger counters use a Geiger-Müller tube, whereas the Radicode utilizes a cesium iodide crystal doped with thallium, which makes it more sensitive to gamma rays, but a little bit less with the beta particles, as this thing can detect beta particles better, but worse with the gamma rays. In addition, the Radicode is great for standalone use, but there are so many more features with the app um, that I downloaded on this tablet. It's currently only um, on Android, so which is why I can't use the iPhone app to use this tablet. And they said a few years back that they were going to release an iOS app, but who knows when it's coming because it's still in its beta version and it's very limited in terms of functionality. It also has um, two cases, which I'm gonna show you later. And you could attach it to your leg when you walk or you could put it on a keychain. And one of my most favorite features about the Radicode is its ability to do gamma spectroscopy. That is not only detecting each individual gamma ray, but also measuring the energy of each photon. It then displays the energies in kilo electron volts. So let's try it out with a few radioactive samples. So here I have two thorium lantern mantles, which are used to produce a bright white light. And right here, I got the radicode. So I'm going to turn it on with a long press of this button. You should hear that sound. And immediately you can already see the background radiation in this room. That is the radiation coming from the ground and the air and space. So I'm going to try to connect it with the app right here. So turn this on and it should uh, flip it back. Should show on Bluetooth right here. We can see that. But we're going to have to wait for it to find it. As you can see right there, you just click on it and then you click OK and that connects it. So now you can hear that sound, that click, that means it's connected. So I'm going to uh, move this away first and then bring this into view. And this is the spectrum that it has right now from a previous use. So I'm going to uh, clear this spectrum, restart the accumulation so that it can have a new spectrum for us to see. And we're going to bring these two thorium lantern mantles back into view. And we're going to put it on here. And quickly, you can see the, al the alarm sounding off. So I'm going to turn that off. Whoever designed this alarm was a genius, but I'm going to leave this on here for a bit so that it can get some accumulation up and we'll come back when I got the accumulation of the gamma spectroscopy. So now that I've got the accumulation on for a few minutes, if I try to go to the peaks that I have right here, this large peak is just the background radiation. But if I try to uh, look at this smaller peak right here, if I go over it, uh, we should see, I'll take a look right about here. We can see the thorium 232 peak right there, which that thorium mantle is mostly made of. So thorium-232 right there is from that peak right here, that larger medium peak. 
And we can look at this small peak right here, which, if I can focus on it, is from the decay products of actinium-228, which also is in the thorium-232 decay chain. So that is cool that we can actually measure the energy of the daughter particles, daughter products of thorium-232, which is displayed in these two peaks. So that is pretty cool. And we got some minor peaks right here, which is probably just noise, but it also is probably from the background radiation. And actually there is a third smaller peak down here for thallium-208, which is also in the thorium-232 um, decay chain. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So let's try a different sample right now. So, so right over here, I have this sample of uranium ore right here. And in the back it says 60,000 counts per minute. But who knows if that's true. So we can test that out with the Geiger counter here. So if I can clear this accumulation right here, restart the accumulation. And then I'll just bring this and it should go crazy. You can hear that. You can hear that alarm to silence it. So we can see it's about 18, 17, about 17, 18 micro sieverts an hour. So if you were to sleep with this thing for about an hour, you would receive um, about 18 micro sieverts. And there are some hot spots on this rock, so you just have to play around 20, it can get up to 20 as well. But yeah, this is probably the most active side most active side and we can check out our accumulation as it has been running for about a minute. We can see that there's that big peak which is just the background as I said. We have this peak right here which is in the, uh, you can see that, radium 226 decay chain. It's kind of small but this is the gamma ray for bismuth from, from the bismuth 214 isotope and we can also check some other spikes such as this one right here which we have to locate that uh, apparently there's some thorium 232 in this so uh, there's that actinium 228 peak as I showed in the thorium lantern mantles it's also present in this rock and then there's some minor other peaks radium 226 right here right about there I don't know if you can focus on this but radium 226 and the daughter product is lead 214 and we can take a look at this peak right here let's see if we can look at this peak this peak is uranium 235 right there and that is because this rock is made mostly uh, the natural occurring radioactive material so that's why it has some uranium-235 that is the uh, for nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons so we got some uranium-235 in there just a little bit of that and yeah that emits mostly alpha particles but also emits some gamma rays which that's why it's detecting directly at 186 kilo electron volts. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's mostly the big peaks for it. There are some minor little peaks also from the chain of uranium. You can see it's protactinium-234 metastatic. And some more thorium-232 isotopes. This mid-212 in this case. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And I have one more radioactive sample, which is not as radioactive, but it will also uh, detect the gamma rays from it. So we'll test that out now. So here I have just your regular old smoke detector right here. And inside there is an ion chamber, 
which contains some americium-241. And it's a synthetic isotope. Americium does not occur naturally. And it's probably produced in some nuclear reactors. So yeah, there is this little pellet that is coated with gold and americium-241, just a fraction of a microgram of it. And that fraction of a microgram can be detected using this guard counter. So if I move this out, you can see it's at 0.11 microsieverts an hour. If we get closer, you can hear the, it, it start to get louder and more clicks. So it's about 0 0.14, 0 0.13, just a tiny bit higher because it's outside of this uh, plastic right here, which probably blocks some of this radiation. But if I had that pellet right now, it would probably be a little bit higher. It's at about 0.13. And this can also be used for gamma spectroscopy. So I'll collect this accumulation for a little bit and I'll show you the spectrum. So right here is the spectrum for the americium-241. And you can tell it's much more clean compared to the other isotopes. And if we take a look at the peak, the minor little peak right behind the background radiation spike, you can see at about 26, you can see 26 kilo electron volts is americium-241. And it emits mostly alpha, just like uranium does, but also emits, I think, about two, wave, uh, two wavelengths of uh, gamma rays. So right about there, that little peak right there is the americium that is coming from this smoke detector, which is pretty cool because you wouldn't think that an ordinary household item just says like a smoke detector would have slight traces of radioactive material in it. And this also has a few settings that you can use instead of just looking at this monitor section setting, which is in microsieverts an hour. If we long press this button, we can press it. Then we can see we have the dose rates right here. We can check the search rate, which is pretty cool because it displays it in a graph. And if we get some more radioactive materials in here, then it should, it should, it should get higher. So you can see, you see that spike right there? This alarm is kind of annoying, so I'm gonna take this off. So, we're gonna turn this guy off. And right there, you can see the spike immediately drops off. And that's a pretty cool setting to use. Also, there is the uh, spectrum setting, which, I which can be easily accessed with this tablet and also the dose setting which um, displays this. In the future, I hope to get more radioactive samples including radium dials or industrial smoke detectors. I believe the mapping option would be a great if you were visiting like a contaminated nuclear site so that you could locate the hotspots and determine the isotopes are, which are present. In the beginning, I considered getting a pancake probe detector to detect the alpha, but they were kind of expensive, so I went with a scintillation detector like the 102. So that does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below, and please like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.